sweet screen. That All right, welcome to the Inside of the Cross Unit Talk series powered by Google Hangout this week. We are joined by a very special guest from Cameron Indoor Stadium in, in uh, excuse me, at Duke University, the first midfield from the Duke Blue Devils, David Lawson, Jake Trapuca, and Christian Wallace. How are you guys doing today? Good, how are you? Doing well. Nice. Well, we uh, are, are lucky to have these guys coming off a huge win on the weekend out in Indianapolis and uh, coming up on a huge semifinal appearance, the seventh straight Final Four for the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, just kind of first off, what, what does that mean, saying seven straight Final Fours for you guys? How are you guys feeling right now? I'll take this one. Uh, I mean, we're feeling great. Obviously, pumped to be back to the Final Four and uh, really excited to play with Cornell. Um, and just kind of just talk about last week's game. I mean, you know, we'll start with Sunday uh, and just kind of how that thing came together. I mean, uh, you guys go down down a couple late and, and just kind of fight back and and uh, and win it. What was the key there for you guys? That's good. Yeah, I think anytime you you play a team like uh, Notre Dame, it forces you to kind of work for each goal, each uh, possession. You know, it's definitely huge for us just just to keep fighting, kind of stick to what we do. Um, and I think it shows the last couple of weeks we've kind of battled back. But I think we're fortunate to, you know, get some bounces here and there. I think that we, did, we just kind of kept fighting, kept trying to figure it out. In the end, it all, all that matters is scoring one more goal than, than the other team. And that's, that's, really, that's what you really, you really want at, 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 at any game. So, um, you know, I feel that if we just keep fighting against most teams, you know, in the end we're just going to look up and see, see who, who scores more goals. And before I forget, if you guys don't mind, could you introduce yourselves to the uh, fans out there so everybody can pick up your audio and, uh, and beautiful faces? Yeah, uh, my name is Christian Walsh. I'm a junior midfielder, used to be an attackman. Uh, I still like to call myself the hybrid position, but uh, I play mostly midfield this year, and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I went to the boys' Latin school, and I'm uh, still really disappointed after that BL loss. I don't blame you. That was a heck of a game. Yeah, Sorry, well, keep going. Dave Lawson, uh, number two, I'm a senior midfielder from uh, Western Massachusetts, and I went to the Middlesex School. And I'm uh, Jay Chapuka. I'm a senior midfielder here from uh, <coughs> Township, uh, New Jersey, and I'm a midfielder as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, so what, what were you guys talking about? You go down to, uh, with, what, 9.29 left to play in the game, uh, with the season on the line. What, what do you guys talk about in, in, in that huddle? What, what do you talk about, like, at that moment? What's kind of the attitude like on the team? I think we've done – this is the second week in a row we've been down in the fourth quarter late, and I think we've just done a great job of keeping our composure, not really freaking out. And uh, it's almost like we kind of just make eye contact and kind of like, you know, we're going to do this, and, and we keep each other calm, and, and we just kind of go out and play and see what happens. And, you know, we've been fortunate the past two weeks to come up with a W. And I can speak as a, uh, as a junior. we got a great senior class, and, and Dave and Jake Chapuka and also – uh, I'd be wrong not to talk about Josh Offit, too, who plays on our second midfield line, who's been amazing. And those guys just leading us. It's really easy just to look to them and know that they want to get it done really badly because this is their last year and we just follow their lead. Yeah, I do want to talk about that second line at one point. But uh, why don't we start with you, with Dave. Uh, I mean, five goals in, in that game last week. You ended up scoring the, the eventual game winner. Mm -hmm. Uh, what what were you feeling? I mean, what was kind of, was there a different feeling out there? What were you kind of seeing and feeling out there? Um, I think it was just one of those days where my shots were falling, so uh, I kept shooting, and uh, I took 11 shots, and just kept letting it rip, and it was falling for me. Christian and Jake, were you seeing anything uh, special out of him uh, on Sunday? Yeah, I, I definitely think in kind of any, in any sporting, or, or any sport, you kind of feel that somebody's kind of feeling it, so you want to kind of get them the uh, ball in spots where they can, you know, be, be, or, or score the ball. <laughs> so uh, I definitely think Dave kind of had that in him. Um, I didn't know he was going to score five goals, but uh, you kind of just keep feeding it to him and uh, end up making a play at, at, at the end of the game, which he's made plenty of times, and uh, just going to show, you know, what kind of player he is. Well, how you, you guys kind of came together, you know, maybe midway through this year. It seemed like, Christian, you, you started off an attack, as you mentioned, and, and uh, this unit came together, you know, midway, mid Maryland Loyola game, it seemed like to me. Correct me if I'm wrong, but what's been the key to, to the chemistry development of, of you guys as, a, as the top unit? Um, I think it's just uh, as the season progresses, you know, we practice a ton, we play a lot, and, and the chemistry just develops through that and just by playing together a lot. And I, I don't think it's anything 
you know, specific, no magic formula. It's just a lot of, a lot of practices, a lot of playing together. And uh, eventually, you know, as it has in past seasons, it kind of comes together for us. And I'd add to that. I mean, these two make it easy for me. I don't, I'm not really expected to do a whole lot. I got Jake, who's a great initiator, and Dave's been doing it all this year, shooting the ball. So I'm just playing my role and make sure to get these guys the ball and get Dave the ball and let him score like he did this weekend. What's the personality breakdown amongst you three? Give me some, uh, give me some inside scoop here. Uh, I'd say uh, all three of us are characters. You know, we have a lot of fun <laughs> out there. We uh, we get in each other's faces a lot, um, in a good way. And you know, sometimes I get worked up. Jake calms me down. Sometimes Jake gets worked up. Uh, I calm him down. And Christian usually is, stays pretty level-headed. And uh, usually, you know, he sees things out in the field and kind of tries to explain them to me and Jake. Yeah. Jake's kind of like a coach. We call him Coach uh, Coach Trip every once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty much the, the more level-headed one. Dave can be a uh, Dave can get these eyes sometimes where you're really uh, really not sure what he's doing. <laughs> but uh, either Matt, Coach Matt Danowski, uh, tries to calm him down with a joke or something, or I just try to get a hold of him and say relax. And my man Skip Reynolds is a whole different animal. <laughs> yeah, I would I would just say that uh, after playing with these guys and Dave for four years, and, you know, living with, living with him and playing with with uh, Christian for three years. You kind of figure out how you can talk to people. You know, you're not just going to point fingers or anything like that. You kind of figure it out. And you kind of know who they are. So you can kind of either find a way to yell at them at one point or really calm them down. Um, you know, I think that you know, over the past couple of years, we kind of figured out how to talk to each other and how to just figure it out, you know, amongst ourselves and how to get the best out of, out of each and every one of us. So. Gotcha. Um, well, a good segue into, as you mentioned earlier, the, the second midfield, a younger group and, uh, you know, talented with Josh Offit, Deemer Class, and uh, Miles Jones. What's been the, the, the development and, and kind of the way you guys have worked together as a first midfield and a second midfield and, and splitting up shifts? And, and what have you guys seen out of those guys and, you know, as kind of the senior, senior and junior leaders of the offense, I would think? Um, just kind of what have you seen out of them and what have they brought? Well, the development of the younger guys has been huge for, for the entire team. I mean, Deemer and, and Miles have really come together. I mean, Miles was playing on the first midfield line early and kind of just got thrown into the fire. But uh, he's really starting to figure it out. And and, uh, and he's there when they score and they, and they do well, that really helps the team. We get a lot of confidence from that. And obviously, Josh Hobbit's having a monster year. He's a stud. And, and he's kind of – he just – the fact that he has no problem, you know, not playing on the first midfield line and playing with those young guys, bringing them along has been uh, huge for our team. Um, it, it, I would imagine that the development of those younger guys has been been crucial for the season, as you mentioned. But you know, talk about the start of the year. You, know, you guys start the year two and four. Uh, you've been pretty much on fire ever since. What's been the difference? You know, start of the year to the end of the year for you guys. I would I would just say that I mean, just kind of keep working. I mean, if if we knew what the secret was, I don't think we'd have a problem every year. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, I don't think there's we can put our finger on one thing. I think it's just a matter of just you know staying at it and and trusting our coaches and uh, just sticking to to what we do. And eventually, it kind of falls into place. Uh, it's kind of you know cliche to say, but um, you know there is there is no secret. Just kind of just keep working and trying to get better. So yeah, just to pick up piggyback off Jake. I mean, I told myself now I'm a junior. I told myself after freshman year and sophomore year. That I wouldn't let that two and four start happen again, or let that slow start happen. But whether it happens or not, we just keep plugging away. It wasn't like we were practicing poorly those first what was it six games. Uh, there was no secret sauce. It was just we just kept playing and kept playing. And luckily, we got loyal, and then things started to turn for us. And you got to give some credit to the coaches too. I mean, they never let us get too high after a win or too low after a win. So kind of the way that they treat us helps us uh, stay stay focused. Is, is there almost, I mean, was there ever a panic or like a, not, not, you know, not, not giving up, but like was there, was, there, was there more concern this year than the last couple of years for you guys or was it always kind of believing in the system? I mean, I think we always believed in the system, but I know right around the, uh, right before the Loyola game, is it, right before the Maryland game, we played Maryland, Loyola, and then UNC, and, and I remember kind of just thinking to myself that, you know, we got to come out of these next three games with at least two wins, and at that point, I mean, there was a little bit of freaking out going on. I don't think anybody was talking about it, but maybe internally people were starting to worry, and that's that's kind of when it started to come together for us. I also think that with our schedule <coughs> in the ACC, anytime you you play you play a team like you know UNC, UVA, 
you know, if you kind of squeak one out, it's a quality win no, no matter what. So, I mean, just because we were down, we were two and four. Two and four, right? Two and five? Yeah. Two, and four. Two, and four. two and four. I mean, all you got to do is just get one and, and just build off that. So, I think that, you know, there really wasn't any, any panic as far as is, is our season going to tank. It was more of just can we play our best just for one game and then build from there. Um, and against Loyola, we kind of got some bounces, you know, here and there and ended up pulling one out, and that kind of, you know, propelled us, I guess, in a way. In a way, but um, but yeah, just just about you know each game going from practice to practice and and then to to, to the next game and hopefully just figuring it out. Also with that, it wasn't those first four losses we played a very uh, high quality team, so there was no real like, oh man, like we just lost them. We knew that the team like Denver and Notre Dame were going to be there at the end, so we were just hey, we played them, we're going to see them again. I remember Coach saying we, at, right after we lost Notre Dame, hey, you're going to see these guys again. Wouldn't you like to have that chance? And we obviously did. Well, I, I think, you know, it seems to me, uh, you know, Coach Donowski, Coach John Donowski is such a such an enigma a little bit in the game in terms of his approach. It seems so different or very, very different from a lot of guys anyway and just kind of the have fun, you know, seemingly laid back attitude. But tell us a little bit about what, what, what his leadership has been like for you guys and his style of, uh, of coaching. Uh. I think he, he's, a, he's definitely an interesting guy. Uh, I love Coach, but uh, it takes a little bit. I think as a freshman, you're kind of – you're almost a little bit confused with with some of his methods. And, uh, it's, like, we had a fifth-year transfer from Harvard who came in this year and plays defense for us, and even he was very confused at the beginning of what exactly Coach meant with some of his comments. But once you kind of figure that out and listen to the message, the underlying message of everything he says, he's – it's really easy to get along and a good guy to have coach you for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely think coaches' kind of like whole mantra is just to stay calm and just be just like be you. And he's always, you know, he, as as I'm sure you know, very laid back guy. Loves to have fun. Never gets really worked up. Um, and I think he tries to, you know, instill that in his players. And you know, we we'd be down in a game and he'd be telling jokes or you know doing something just to kind of calm us down and just let us. Uh, relax a little bit and I think that you know he's kind of taking that on each year and you know he does a great job of kind of figuring out each team and figuring out his players very well so you know he, he knows how to speak to people and he knows how to obviously get the best out of his players at each each given year. Yeah when we were playing Loyola and we were down one uh, he usually is in the defensive huddle but he came over to the offensive huddle and just goes and just like kind of looked at all of us pretty calm just goes like like if we don't score but we're, we're going to score a goal here. I, I know we're going to score a goal here. And it was kind of his, like, his calm confidence that, that really helped us at that point. Well, I, I've, you know, I, I've known the guy for a while, and I don't know him, obviously, as well as you guys do. But, you know, watching him walk into the room at the coaches' convention every year is just, is just so perfect. Like, he's just like Kramer walking in there. He knows everybody. He's pointing <laughs> at people. He's like a rock star. It, it's, every year, it, it, it's the same thing, and it, ever, it amazes me every year. But, uh, I mean, are there any other good stories or kind of anecdotes that you have from, from Coach Janowski over the years? Uh, I'm trying to – on the field, one of the things that sticks in my mind was – was it last fall when we played Georgetown here? Maybe my freshman fall. I mean, freshman spring, we played Georgetown, and we were – we had a lot of opportunities in the first half, but I, in the first half, but I think we were down maybe four or five goals at halftime. It was 9-3. Nine, nine, three. Three, uh, and he walks in the locker room, and everyone's not really saying anything, but we knew we were playing all right, just things were falling. And I remember him saying, in the front of the locker room, saying, does anybody think we're going to lose this game? And it was silent. And then we ended up coming out, and we turned around the second half and won. And that's kind of always stuck with me, just his, like, cool, calm, and confidence in his way of words with speaking to us, whether it's at halftime before the game, you know, at practice every day. It's definitely unique. <laughs> Uh, well, it's good to see. It's obviously been effective. Seven straight Final Four speaks for itself. Um, you, you mentioned, you know, uh, Loyola, you guys go down 7-2 in, in the first round. Uh, that, that's probably an interesting halftime for you guys. Uh, what, what was kind of the, the, the vibe like uh, in that halftime and what was said there? Obviously something that worked and, and you guys ended up winning that game in double overtime, but what was kind of the, the vibe like in the locker room there? Well, I know initially people were pretty uptight when we walked in there, and, and, and I was trying to calm people down. It's just we know when we're not playing our best lacrosse and we're not really – and it's not coming together for us. And I think everyone everyone knew that, that that just wasn't – you know, that wasn't us and that wasn't the best we could play. 
So I, I think we just needed a couple breaks, a couple goals, and, and a little confidence, and, and we could turn it around. And that's kind of what I was trying to instill in people. Yeah, it's definitely it always comes back to just getting back to what we do. Uh, coaches hard bar all the time. You know, it comes back to ground balls, fundamentals. Um, you know, so I think that that helps us kind of focus on what on what on what we want to do. You know, each game, and then after that, it's just kind of just playing. So, um, you know, all the, the the ball might not fall your way each time, uh, or in that case, in that half. But uh, you know, if we just keep fighting, keep doing our stuff, hopefully stuff, hopefully breaks will start to come our way. And um, you know, it's all about just getting back to like what what we do as a, as a team. What is it? I mean, I would think that this is uh, something that some people would be interested in. What is it like playing in a playoff overtime game where your season's on the line, especially for you seniors? You know, your career's on the line. How do you kind of describe that that atmosphere and and you know the the right mindset to uh, not be too nervous, but you know not be too laid back and and kind of perform well in 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 that instance? Yeah, I, I definitely think it's it's definitely in the back of your head. Um, I can only speak for myself in this. It's, it's, you can't really think about it. You can't let it affect how you play. Um, you know, obviously, if, if you're trying to be uh, conservative in your looks or whatever, but you just kind of kind of play it as, a, as an extra quarter. Um, you know, obviously, you, you know that you know, if, if you make a mistake or, or, or they score, it's over. But um, I still think you've you got to stay aggressive and kind of Put it to the other team because you know they're they're thinking the, the exact same thing. So if you're confident in what you play, and you know the the the, the looks that, that that you're making, um, you know you just want to kind of stick it to them as, as much as you can and, and uh, be aggressive. I'll say one thing also that helps with any game, especially overtime games, is we uh, we prepare very well during the week. Our coaches do a great job of getting us prepared for games. So when we come to game time, when we come to overtime, we feel like we've done everything we can in that given week. So that while losing to the back of your mind, maybe if that were to happen in an overtime game, if we had a loss to Loyola, we knew we did everything we could to prepare, and we prepared hard. Our coaches worked with us on the offense. and So if that would have happened, it, it would have happened, but we were lucky enough to get a good break and uh, Case with Dye scored for us. So. Yeah, I, during the overtime, uh, I, tried to, I tried to be loose. Uh, I, I kind of just tried to feel it out and see how, like, how everyone's feeling. But, I, like, Sometimes like I like to look at like a Josh Offit or, or Josh Don and, or Jordy and just kind of like say a movie quote or make a joke. Just kind of try to lighten the mood a little bit and uh, just just kind of. <clears throat> sometimes I feel like it's best to get your mind off off potentially losing and ending your season. So I usually take that approach and then and then kind of bring it back in with like something serious. But usually just try to keep it pretty light. What are your go-to movie quotes? Movies for uh, for quotes. Uh, Happy Gilmore's Happy been Gilmore's getting a ton, of, a ton of love lately. Uh, 21 Jump Street's got yeah, it up there. 21 Jump Street. Um, uh, Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Wow, you guys. We watched Beer League last week. I'm not a big movie guy, so whenever I get to watch a movie finally, and I like to throw a quote in there because Jordan Wolf and uh, his good buddy Eddie Loftus are two uh, big movie quoters, and I'm usually on the outside, so whenever I watch one, I try to get a couple in. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, speaking of, of Eddie Loftus, there is a question on Twitter from Cape Cod Swag District. Uh, <laughs> who's more instrumental to Duke's seven-year success, Chris Loftus or Eddie the Eagle Loftus? Uh, that's a, Cheetah or Eagle? I don't, I don't want to break any ties with that one, but <laughs> I got a feeling Cheetah might be on the uh, yeah. end of that question. Yeah, uh, Chris Cheetah Loftus spent, uh, spent a lot of time here at Duke. <laughs> I think he spent uh, six-plus years, so that's tough to compete with. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll, I'd say they're about even right now. <laughs> Fair enough. The whole Loftus family, to yeah. be honest. Mr. and Mrs. Loftus have been, what, making the trek down here from Long Island for seven years, so they've been key in all this. We'll, we'll make them the winners of this one then. I think that's fair. <laughs> uh, and speaking of, I mean, nicknames, uh, does Eddie – or does the eagle come off of cheetah, or like, where do these nicknames come from? And and are there any other good ones on the team? I'm sure there are plenty. Well, the the Loftus family, they're all animals. Uh, so Dan Loftus, who's the oldest, who's a goalie, is he's dog, Dan dog. And then uh, we got Chris Cheetah Loftus, and we got Eddie Eagle Loftus. And then they have a sister, but I I don't think she has an animal name. Uh, she's a good one. But I, I don't really know this, the background story of that, Dave, do you? No, I think uh, Eagle kind of emerged because dog, there was dog and there was cheetah and there was Eddie. And that just wasn't, that 
Yeah. It didn't just be yeah. Eddie after Dog <laughs> and Cheetah, so eventually he became the Eagle. But Eddie's got Easy E, he's got Sheebles. Sheebly. Yeah. He's got, uh, a, lot he's got a lot of nicknames. You guys have any nicknames? Uh, my man Jake Trapuka, Trip, Skip, Trip Reynolds, uh, Skip Reynolds. Sevensburg. <laughs> We're pretty good with just ridiculous names in general. Yeah. Dave uh, has an alter ego too. Uh, his name is Bryce Larson. <laughs> you might see it floating in the atmosphere a little bit. So, uh, Comes out. Yeah. He's a little bit of an animal though. Nice, nice. <laughs> I'm sure you understand all of this. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm writing all this down. I got it. I'm, I'm nailed. So I don't, I don't know where to go from there. But uh, why don't we focus on? Uh, I've never had to segue out of that, uh, something like that before. But why don't we uh, talk about the week? Uh, you guys mentioned kind of preparation from the coaches being so critical for you guys. This is obviously a fairly important week in your lacrosse careers, heading into the Final Four uh, to play Cornell. What do you guys focus on this week, and what's kind of the, the, the schedule looking like for you guys? Uh, we're not exactly quite sure about the schedule yet. I know we're, we're thinking about traveling uh, Thursday, so at least for the next two days we, uh, we, shoot around, uh, we shoot around 11 and then get a little break for lunch, and then we come back and have practice at 2.30. And uh, as far as the practice plan, you know, your guess is as good as mine right now. <laughs> yeah, we have a little bit of film work in there too. Yeah, trying to usually film after shooting. Started with film last night, a little bit on Cornell, and just – and, and about us putting last weekend's game to rest and seeing what we need to work on from our game against Notre Dame. So is that is that pretty typical that you you know the the practice plan is kind of more kept to the coaches and you guys show up and and have at it or, or is that different in the playoffs than normal? Yeah, we've been uh, we've been having a meeting uh, like a team meeting right before practice where they'll kind of go over the practice plan and explain why we're doing things certain ways. So that's that's usually when we find out what the deal is. Yeah, and I kind of say it all the time. Dave's gonna probably gonna laugh at it, but it's we're we're kind of players. We're 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 uh, actually supposed to play. They're supposed to coach, so we just kind of do what they say, and that's kind of my yeah. line. Players play, coaches players coach. play, coaches coach. So Fair enough. We don't worry about the anything else besides that. So worry about uh, what you can control. That's that's a smart mantra. I like that. The great Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> um. What. Uh, what is that? I mean, what is the the key for you guys going into the, the final four and, and playing Cornell? Uh, what's what's next? I mean, how do you guys feel you're playing, and, and what do you need to do to to come out of this? I would assume the way you want to on on Monday, victorious. I just think it's going to be a huge challenge. I mean, Cornell is probably the hottest team in the country right now. Um, we're going to have to play one of our best games, or probably our best game of the year, you know, on the uh, biggest stage. Um, we've struggled. Me and Dave have been there the past two years. We struggled on the Final Four stage. Um, you know, it's just going to be a big, big challenge. I mean, they got they got probably the uh, Torrington winner in Pinnell. They got unbelievable defense that that, that uh, causes turnovers and and who, who loves to get out. Um, you know, so it's going to be a huge challenge for us all week to kind of prepare for them. Um, you know, they've been rolling over people. Obviously, they 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 uh, rolled over Maryland, uh, who we struggled with. So uh, it's just going to be a big challenge for us to kind of figure out what they want to do and, and how how we can attack them. But again, we're we're going to need all, we're going to need all all what ten seniors to kind of lead us and uh, hopefully get our, our our best effort uh, on Saturday. Yeah, the seniors are kind of ex trying to express to the other guys that you know just getting to the final four isn't good enough, and, and we really need to be focused this week and and just. Think back to the past two Final Fours where you know we got whacked by Maryland two years in a row, and, and, and hopefully keep that in the back of our minds as something to motivate us. Just getting there is not enough. Yeah, and we're definitely really excited for the opportunity. I mean, the Final Four is an awesome, awesome time to play, and there's a big crowd and stuff. But it is different. It's different than another game with all those fans there. And I, I can speak for myself. I'm really excited to get back there again now as a junior. I mean, my freshman year, I remember showing up and being in Baltimore and. Wearing the Duke jersey wasn't easy to be a boot as you run into the stadium <laughs> against Maryland with the hometown crowd. But uh, we're excited for this opportunity, definitely. It'll be a great challenge. Nice. Um, one of the changes for you guys this year, you know, Coach uh, Matt Danowski coming on board, um, working with the offense, and obviously, uh, you know, the NCAA points leader currently. Uh, what has he brought to you guys? Have you picked up anything specific from him um, offensively? He's he's been awesome to have around. I I mean I can see from both angles. I worked with him first early in the season when he's 
worse uh, majority of the time with the attack, and now I'm moving to midfield, so I don't see him as much. But uh, he just brought a different view to the team, and same with Coach Joe Sanowski, too, because they're both younger guys. Uh, they see it more from our perspective, per se, than some of our older coaches, like Coach Caputo and Coach, Coach Sanowski. But uh, Matt's been awesome for the offense, and him and Coach Caputo work really well together, and it's been uh, working. Yeah, I think the fact that Matt Matt went here, played here, you know, he, he knows all about the program. He knows kind of what we go through on a daily basis, and that's been huge, kind of communi communicating that to Coach Zanowski and, <clears throat> and interacting with us. He's, he's, he's been a great addition, so we're happy he's here. Nice. Um, what, what is the key to these, these kind of road trips when you're in a new city? I would imagine you have, you know, a fair amount of free time. Uh, What's the key as a team, you know, to, to kind of focusing but kind of not getting too wrapped up in, in the details? Uh, I think it's, I think it's just, as the coaches say, traveling well, you know, making sure you're getting a lot of sleep, taking care of your body. And uh, for me, I try to not think about the game as, as much as possible sometimes. Like sometimes I, I think that, you know, pregame, if I'm like trying to get myself too pumped up or really trying to focus like too much on the game, I, I don't play well. I'm gripping the stick a little too tight. So for me, I like to kind of be laid back and, and just kind of relax, make sure my, my legs feel good and I'm getting enough sleep, eating right. Yeah, I think the key to our road trips and uh, is the food. I mean, we, get, we get fed pretty well on those road trips, and that's always uh, nice. Yeah, Joe Farrar does a pretty good job of hooking it up, our, our trainer. He, he makes sure he picks out each meal. So we kind, of <laughs> him, we kind of give him a hard time to make sure he's picking out good food, but uh, it's always pretty good. So. What, what's the team favorite? There's a lot of a lot of chicken being eaten. A lot of chicken farm. Yeah. yeah. Standard. Trying to think which was the best meal, but we had a great we had a great um, uh, fajita night. Was it last week? Yeah. Last oh, week, yeah. great fajita night. We had some chicken. We had some steak, guacamole. I'm, I'm a huge kind of Mexican guy. I love making my own stuff with that. So it's pretty good. It's pretty, it was pretty good. So Joe Frog, that one up. It's pretty good. It's actually pretty good. It's not bad. So Joe plans the meals and cooks them, or one or the other? <laughs> he, I mean, he might think that. He, he, actually, he could probably pull it off. If he wanted to cook them, he could probably do it. He's, he's, a, he's a pretty good chef. But, uh, no, he kind of plans it out. He kind of figures out what's kind of best for us as far as getting in proteins, getting in uh, you know, carbs and stuff. So we kind of leave that up to him. Uh, Coach D has his hand in, in kind of what, what place he wants to get it from or order from. But uh, Ferraro is kind of the guy who kind of uh, – Decides what what type of food. So, gotcha, gotcha. Um, then last question. Give me the the music uh, scene uh, amongst the team. Is there is there a guy who plays most of the music uh, in the locker room? Uh, what kind of what's the style? Is there a clash of cultures there between uh, the different geographic uh, backgrounds? What what's kind of the lay of land on musically for you guys? I'm gonna pass this one to my man, Dancing Rick, over here. Uh. <laughs> I'd probably give myself the Team DJ Award. I mean, I'm, I'm probably, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure Kunkel, I'm sure uh, Luke Dupree, I'm sure Dax Fred Kirby. Kirby. That's going to well be pissed. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I definitely have gotten into the, the whole house kind of push. Um, you know, I kind of check websites, whatever, get get some songs from from people. But um, I definitely think our team kind of has kind of has a mix of house. Uh, definitely country the past couple of weeks. Wow. Just kind of just like throwbacks, like throwback '90s songs. 90s, yeah. Um, I just try to try to keep it fresh because again, if you're listening to the same songs all the time, like, all the time, you kind of get bored of them. So it's definitely good to throw in like a like a '90s song in there once in a while, um, or throw a house song on there, or just a country song. So it's just just to try to keep the uh, mood kind of lively, and plus our locker room kind of gets kind of rowdy with guys dancing, and doing yeah. doing weird stuff. So. Uh, it's definitely good to kind of get some get some energies from from, from some music. So. I gotta say, DJ Dax Cohen is uh, in charge of the music pregame. He does a pretty good job. We like some of those sing along songs. You know, as Dave said, we like to be loose before the game starts. So, not all house or not all rap, but a little country sing along. Uh, what's that song? Uh, I'm listening to. I'm coming, coming over. Coming over. Scott McCreary. It's a, it's a yeah, good see one. you tonight. See you tonight. See you Scott tonight. McCreary. See you tonight. He's an American Idol guy. Uh, it looks, <laughs> looks kind of weird. But it's a pretty wow. good song. Also, Cruz on the Florida Georgia line was was a big hit with us. Nice, good nice. One. Well, a lot of, a lot of variety there. I like it. Um, well, then last question. Last <laughs> question. Uh, something I like to ask everybody, especially you guys, kind of from three different areas geographically. 
what was kind of one key to, to your development growing up uh, in your area, something that maybe you know a kid out there who was watching this could kind of pick up and, and do on his own to get better and, and, and maybe you know aspire to a level of a Duke in the Final Four uh, at, you know, as, as juniors and seniors? Go down the line. You ready? Right down the line. I'm not ready. All right, uh, I'll go. Um, I would just say it's kind of weird because uh, Joe Sanowski is from my high school. Um, so kind of growing up and watching his class play, they were kind of pretty good. He was always known as one of the uh, better, you know, D guys in the country. Um, and kind of growing up in the Mount Lakes program, I mean, I'm sure these guys can talk about it, or anybody can talk about, like, their high school program. But uh, Tim Flynn, who was the uh, head coach of the USA team, um, just kind of – he kind of has his hand in that program very well. Um, you know, he gets kids at, at young age to work on their uh, fundamentals and just and just uh, develop kids as they get older. And I remember just looking up to guys like like uh, Joe and and uh, a couple other guys, just saying like, I can't wait to play, you know, for Mount Lakes. And I think that that kind of like prepares you as you go on. And uh, and once I got to high school, I kind of developed from from there. But uh, but I can definitely give my lacrosse kind of start to, to coach Flynn? Yeah, I'd say for me, part, part of my development was just playing a ton of sports. Um, I played soccer, uh, soccer, baseball, and hockey at one point, and then I switched over to football, basketball, and lacrosse. Which was also, I, was also, uh, I was also a swimmer back in the day. Jake was giving me a hard time about that last. yesterday. We were in the pool. He's a butterfly. butterfly. I used to do the butterfly pretty well. Um, but, yeah, just <laughs> how swimming with <laughs> just, uh, playing a lot of sports, I guess, is part of my development. Yeah, I'd say just coming, growing up in both. I mean, my grandfather was an All-American lacrosse player in Maryland. So, and so, so that's a family point. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, I mean, I always had a stick in my hand since I was young. So I was always playing in the backyard. And obviously going to a program like Boys Latin, uh, Coach Bob Shriver is awesome there. So i got to give a lot of credit to him. But, again, just seeing guys like, I mean, the names – just Travis Reed, Brett Weiss, Chris Bull, and all those guys that you just grow up watching and idolizing was always really my driving force. I wanted to be there. I wanted to play in that big St. Paul's Boys Latin rivalry game. and that, that really spurred my interest in lacrosse and made me work harder. Nice. Well, that, that's great advice. Appreciate it. Love the multi-sport guys. Uh, always good to see. I know coaches appreciate that. So. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. This has been great. Um, congratulations on your seventh straight Final Four. We will see you Saturday in Philadelphia at Lincoln Financial Field, 2.30 uh, in the first game, I believe, ESPN2 live. Uh, you can follow along on InsideTheCross.com. But uh, I want to wish you guys the best of luck, and thanks for uh, coming on. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.